Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs. It is my pleasure to present the 2021 CPMA Lifetime Achievement Award to John Anderson. I think we'd all agree it's not quite as much fun as being together in person, but it's still a great way to celebrate any way we can. This year's recipient has spent a lifetime dedicated to fresh produce. He came into the industry as a young teenager in 1975, working in a Vancouver warehouse. Over the next 46 years, he left the warehouse, but not the heavy lifting behind. He went on to build one of Canada's leading produce companies with a global reputation for innovation, trustworthiness, and a constant focus on solutions. Our winner not only has created an international organization, he has earned quite a few personal honors along the way like Canada's most admired CEO, the BC CEO, and Entrepreneur of the Year Award twice. He was honored as CPMA's Produce Person of the Year in 2000 and was recently presented with the BCPMA's Lifetime Achievement Award. While John's guided OPI, he's also worked to improve our industry. He has served in such roles as the CPMA Board Chairman and North American Trade Committee Chair. South of the border, he's been the Chairman of the Centre for Growing Talent by the PMA, as well as the PMA International Advisory Council. He served as the PMA Retail Board Director and as a member of the Association's main board and as well as the PMA Executive Committee. And now, Let's go sit down with our newest Lifetime Achievement Award winner. Hey John, you know, thanks for taking the time to, to sit with me today and congratulations again on winning the CPMA Lifetime Achievement Award. You know, 46 years in this industry, I imagine, let's, let's go back a little bit and tell me what it was like in the industry back then when you first started. Hey, well, thanks and yeah, nice to be here with you today, buddy. Yeah, going back 46 years, you know, it was a different world. Back in those days, there was no such thing as personal computers, cell phones, the internet. There was telecommunications through a telex machine, which you would type in and have a, a ribbon put out, and that's the way you communicate around the world. That and the telephone was all there was. Yeah. Transportation, buddy, you know what? Rail, a lot of stuff was done by rail. I, the first job I ever had with Oppenheimer was unloading a 50-foot 50 50 rail car full of ice and cabbage. And there's no, very little rail cars at, at all today. No, exactly. And I mean, you know, that's, you know, I imagine you were a strapping young lad back then when unloading rail cars for Oppie. Well, you know what? 100 pound sacks of potatoes, 50 pound sacks of salt. Yeah. Age hasn't been the best of me when it comes to that. But. No, and, and, and you're absolutely right. And talk about, uh, you know, cell phones. Even when I started, no cell phones. We used to have to make sure we had a roll of quarters in our pocket to get to the phone booth if we had to make a call. Yeah, exactly. If we're on the road. So that's interesting. That's, that's very interesting stuff, John. Thanks. Well, another thing, buddy, think about it. Year-round produce. You yeah. didn't have berries on a year-round basis. A Granny Smith apple was the leading apple at that point in time. And you could only get it seasonally. Royal Gal Apple hadn't even been introduced yet. And the Royal, and so things like that were just like completely yeah, not normal. No, exactly. And, and you're absolutely right. Seasons were such a big thing. You know, people had fresh New Zealand apples and they would wait for them because there was no real CA apples at that time. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. So it's interesting going back. That Kiwi fruit was years. like hardly known. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's, it's. It's so amazing how fast it's changed. And I mean, I think honestly too, for 46 years in this business, you've seen it all. I've seen a lot, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. You know what, and another question I got for you is, you know, John, you've always given back to the industry. That's always been important to you. And, and I know that you've even made sure that Oppie staff to this day are giving back to the industry. Why has it been so important to you? I think it's always great to have people work together, you know? Um, more people together do things better. It draws more skills, more experiences from each other, and helps us raise the bar for everybody, right? The industry becomes a better place when you get a lot more people at the table. The high tide raises all boats, and so if the whole industry is better, that makes us better as well. And I think it's great because you get to build relationships from around the world you normally wouldn't have had, go to, go to places around the world you normally wouldn't have seen, and I think it actually helps you become a better person. That's great, John. And I mean, I, I, I have to agree with all you said because, you know, I've had the opportunity to, uh, you know, be in a CPMA chair and I mean, the people make a difference. There's some outstanding people in this industry and you're absolutely right. If we're all working to make the industry better for everyone, we all win. 
and I think that's really nice. But I have to commend you because you have really entrenched it in, in OPI staff that to get involved not just in the major associations but the, the regional associations as well. And I think that, you know, that's, that's great and I know that when you're here for another 50 years, <laughs> I imagine you'll still be doing that, so. Well, you know, we're just fortunate to have things like the CPMA, the BCPMA in Alberta and Ontario and Quebec, so many great associations that can help us give back to the industry. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And I think that um, it's really, really good what you've done over the years for sure. You know, and, and, and you know, we can't, we can reminisce about the, 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 the past, but what do you see really down the road for the future? Because I mean, that's, that's the million dollar question, I think, going forward. You know, I think the pandemic's done some, some favors for us in the produce industry, and I think the reason for that is it's really opened up the value of fresh fruit and vegetables, and people are more conscious about health now than they were before. So I really think that that's really helping uh, people's awareness, and I'm hoping that's going to continue to help consumption of produce going forward. Year-round supplies of all kinds of new choices and new varieties of product are coming on. And I think that's going to continue. So that's going to give people more choice, more, more innovation is going to be out there, shelf life uh, growth for packaging methods. Um, I think really labor issues and consumer buying habits are one of the things I'm concerned about going forward. Um, laborers are going to be more difficult to get around the world, but there's going to be more automation that comes along to help with that. And different growing methods that are going to be out there to allow us to be more efficient in the future. Um, consumer buying habits, and we've seen shifts that have happened over the last year. I, see, I think we're going to see shifts again, and it's going to be really difficult. Uh, food service obviously has been hit hard. I see food service coming back. I see that uh, coming at the expense of retail. So there's going to be a shift going on. Um, probably, I mean, look at me. If I get the chance to go to restaurants again, I'll probably eat out every day for the next two weeks. <laughs> right now, you can't do that. So that's going to shift, and then people will kind of go back to whatever the new normal will be. So it's not going to be what it was before. I don't think you'll find everybody at the office every day, every, every place. But probably in the office, well, a lot more than they are now, but a lot less than they were in the past. So maybe they'll be back to eating at home a little bit more than they did in the past, but certainly a, a lot less than what they are right now. Yeah, I think I've noticed too, like you said, eating at home. I think um, for me and, and, and my family, I mean, we've tried a lot of different things too. So I think it's kind of exciting that way that we've maybe even got to be a little bit better of a cook, but you're absolutely right. I can hardly wait to go out to a restaurant and, and sit down and, and have a nice steak. I hate to say it, we're in the produce business. But <laughs> put a potato with I, that, Walt, and some yeah, broccoli. Yeah, put a potato and, okay. with the broccoli and that, yeah. but I, you know, I, I love a good steak. But I think that you're, you're absolutely right, and I mean, the future, it, it comes so fast now, and things change at so such quickly. a fast yeah. pace now that it's... I think navigating the geopolitical issues around the world are going to be a challenge for us all. We've had a pretty wide open world, and uh, there's a lot of things happening right now to change that. So we'll just see how that all unfolds. And the other part, I think, is the weather. You know, the weather is changing around the world. I don't call it global warming. I call it climate change because a lot of things I've seen lately are, like, we've had hail in Los Angeles on our, on our strawberries, and we've got frost in Italy on the kiwi fruit. It's like things are, ch are shifting, and they've been shifting for thousands of years, but they seem to be shifting at a fairly fast rate right now. So that has impacts on where we can grow and get our product in the world. You know, you, 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 feel, you feel bad for the growers that, you know, spent all their time and one little weather event just ruins it for them. And, but that's Mother Nature at its finest. But, you know, we just weather those storms and, 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 well, and I think, well, do our the, best. The, the method of growing, how we grow things in the future, that, you know, is going to change. So we've got to look at different ways and different mediums as to how we grow our product. Might not all be in fields anymore. It's covered, covered agriculture could come and be a larger piece of what happens in the future. Yeah, you're, I think you're absolutely right too, and I think that will protect the, 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 the growing conditions for sure. But I think, you know, one thing about produce, as I said, that every day is different, and I think, I think that's why it's exciting in a way, and I think that, you know, the most people that I've met in the produce business are really passionate about what they do. No and, question about that. And yeah. I think yeah. that's what's kind of nice about this business is that there's some great people out there and I think honestly um, you're, you're one of them that um, 46 years, that's, it, that is incredible to have at work up from the warehouse to the top and the CEO of the company and chairman, I mean, that's just wonderful. And, and to be honest with you, it's really wonderful for you to give back to the industry in your way. So I can't but I can't think of another person that deserves this award because um, well done to you. Well, thank you, Walt. Really appreciate that. You know, I'm just excited to be part of this industry because we're 
bringing fresh, flavorful, healthy product to people around the world, and that's that's a great calling. Yeah. Well, thanks very much again. Thanks and, again, and really It's a real honor. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking to you too, John. It's been great to chat with you in person. You have been a good friend, and you've extended that friendship across the globe. You have built a company that operates with a strong sense of purpose and recognizes the difference it can make in the lives of many. By supporting growers around the corner and around the world, economies are built, people are cared for, and nutritious, safe, fresh produce enhances the lives of our neighbors. I can say with confidence, this industry is much better because you are in it. Thanks, Walt, and thanks to Ron and everyone at the CPMA. It's a great honor to receive this Lifetime Achievement Award. The fact is, this wouldn't have happened without the many fantastic people I've had the privilege of working with over the decades. This includes the team at OPI, as well as many colleagues in the industry. I'd like to say a special thank you to my family and my lovely wife, Joanne, for her underlying support over the years. It's in trying times that we need our friends the most. This year has been an exceptionally challenging one for all. But despite the challenges, surprises, and downturns, I feel we've been able to weather the storm by sticking together. This is something really unique to our industry, and one that makes me feel fortunate to have chosen fresh produce. Thank you. <laughs>